Well, this is it, ladies and gents, the ultimate show of this very long series that we've done. This is, of course, the Tilt and Talk show sponsored by Ball Sports, principal sponsors of Birmingham City Football Club, who will be our sponsors as well next year. Also in conjunction with the Blues Trust, our friends at Excessive Blues, the SAS Auto Company, uh, the Garrison Coffee Company and our good friends down at the Borsley Labour Club. Can't wait to see you guys once again. So this is it. This is the last one we're going to do. Then we're going to take a summer break. And we've got an absolute cracker for you tonight, ladies and gents, girls and boys. There's loads of us on. The one and only joining us for the first time for a very long time, Mr. Adam Wilkes. Good evening, everybody. And Mark Adams. Mr. Good evening, Rowe. everybody. Hello, everybody. Mr. Okay. Mr. Sheen. Good evening, all. He's on his iPad tonight. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Brown. Good evening. <laughs> on our Aiton fan cam this week, we've got Alan Watton. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, we knew we'd bring you a beaut for the end of the season, and it's been a very long one for us all. We have with us friend of the show, and I think it's his fourth time on tonight now, the one and only Mr. Tom Ross. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Always, always a pleasure being with the Tilton lads. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Um, congratulations to the Blues ladies for getting through um, heartily. Yeah. yeah, heartily. They did well, did well. Um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's a sad story, though, to be Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going, yeah, I know, I know, no. Oh, crazy, man, isn't it? Crazy. Um, right, OK, so we are now Mr Donglas, and uh, <laughs> he's uh, definitely gone. Let's just hope that we can get somebody in who wants to take the club at heart and take care and pride of what we all love so very much indeed. Um, can't believe this This has gone, This well, it's been 14, 14 months, has it? No, longer than that, probably. 18 months, 16 months, something like that. Anyway, it's been a very, very, very long shot. And the guest list has just been amazing, thanks to Craig Courtney. He's already doing the hard work for next year, so keep yeah. it up, matey. Yeah, a few, um, lined, few lined up already, Nick. Thank you to all our friends that have uh, donated uh, charity monies over, the, uh, over the, the COVID period. I know it's not been an easy time for anybody, um, but we've just calculated it up roughly that we've raised in excess of £10,000 uh, since being on air, and, and the charity pushes have only really been going the last couple of years, to be fair. And the PTSD charity, and we're having a money match from Craig Court and his company, has raised over four grand. Mm, Nearly good. five, isn't it, Chris? I think I'm not sure, it's, it's a lot. And thereabouts, yes. So, uh, so that's absolutely stunning. It's brilliant, uh, to know that that money will do, uh, go to certain good causes. Mm. Uh, Alan Watton, good evening. What have you been doing with yourself lately? Well, I uh, I had my first game of snooker today for. Six months, and uh, I've forgotten everything I ever learned. <laughs> <laughs> Was you in the queue? Yeah. Hey. Oh. <laughs> What's your highest break, Alan? 30. I think That's mine's my child. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> break of 30, that's not bad, is it? Nah. That's no. not bad. I I and also in billiards, my best break's 30. <laughs> right, OK. And uh, Tom's just having a quick drink. Tom, update us on what you've been doing lately, buddy. Um, what has he? Covering amazing. covering the games um, for Talksport: Coventry, Villa, West Brom, Birmingham, Birmingham mainly. Ten pound fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, doing that, I've uh, since we last spoke, I've launched my new podcast, which I've been because yep. I couldn't do it because I've got a rubbish computer and a rubbish <laughs> microphone. I've invested in a really good new laptop. Really top class microphone. So I've launched my podcast, which are doing okay. Um, and know. basically, we're just getting back to some sort of normality. We've got a game at St Andrews on Thursday, and the Blues All Stars first game in over a year. And we're playing at St Andrews, and I've got uh, Craig Gardner's playing. Uh, nice, which now yeah, good, which will be good. Um, and I'm, I was hoping Lee Bowyer might, but I'll wait and see about that. But uh, mm -hmm. this will be fantastic. So. Raising money, of course, for less fortunate people, which is always, yep. a, 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 like you guys do, is always a good thing to do. But mm -hmm. apart from that, updating my biography as well, which the publishers have been pushing me for, and I've already broken three copy deadlines <laughs> uh, trying to get it done. But I, I have to do it in bits and pieces, I have bits and starts. So I had plenty happening, to be perfectly honest, Pen plenty happening mm -hmm. as well, as doing all the TV commentaries for BKB, the Bare Knuckle Boxing at the O2 Arena in London. Oh, right. The okay. world champion is a fanatical blue nose who wears blue shorts. Um, Connor Tierney from uh, Wheelie Castle, he's the ah. world champion. Right, Craig Cork. Sorry again, Nick. 
there's a name for Craig Courtney for next season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> no, you know what I mean. You only have, that's the only thing I have to be in it, really, Blues. Um, <laughs> got to say congratulations to the Tilton Talk Show for uh, successfully. And I think it was it, uh, look, Chris. I'm going to have to give you a little bit of credit for this. I don't like to. No, I don't mind. But it was you, and it was me. Probably <laughs> Steve O to come and manage the Blues. We and, told yeah, him. Did ask him. <laughs> we did tell him. The opportunity ever came back to yeah. us, Blues. And, yeah. Would you? And he said, never say never. And I said, see you in a week then, yeah. one week yeah. later. Yeah. So yeah. me and Pete, yeah. we're taking it. We're having it. We're sharing it 50-50, Chris. <laughs> right. No, it's been on my mind all week. Mate. <laughs> it's been on your mind for a I'll wait till he loses three on the trot and I'll remind you of that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm trying not to take too much credit. Just you know how big this business is. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably shift the blame onto me and Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, I know how to do that, all right. Yeah. Because it is Birmingham City, remember, things yeah. tend to now and again go tits up. Can I say yeah. that? I'll send it your way. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Right. It's a bit strange this week because there's no football really to talk about, uh, but what we've got to do is, is really, really, really just take it easy this summer, um, stay safe, try and try and just, you know, not go too mad, and then let's fingers crossed that we can get supporters in to St Andrews uh, at the start of next season because it's been like somebody removing your arms, and it? it? It's been horrible, absolutely horrible. <laughs> and trying to watch it on the TV with, with no crowd in there, and you know that you, you're looking at St Andrews and you should, I should be sat there, I should be there, you know. Um, nah, it's, it's just been the worst, mm. the worst of the worst. Awful. Not forget course all those people that we've lost and have been extremely poorly and one thing and another uh but from football fans point of view and i'm sure you know anybody in any sport it, it's just been it's just been dreadful yeah but we're not going to be down beat today it's the last show of the season uh upbeat we go okay uh, paul, what's your week been like what you've been doing paul's paul's gone i think is he there uh, oh, 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 yeah. Sorry. <laughs> paul. um yeah yeah not bad just working um but had a good weekend and all that, you know. So yeah, just working and uh, and and that's it really. Yeah, managed to get out for a bite sweet yesterday, which was nice for a change. And yeah, excellent. Um, missing the blues already. Oh, to be honest. What, what did you direct a club statement about? You know, updating the cycles. I'm thirsty about the uh, the Tilton and the car. Yeah. yeah, I thought that, I thought that was um, I thought that was very very new. Obviously, some people not had before, which was nice to see. Um, oh, we did have it yeah. a couple of years ago, didn't we? With Dave and Claire. We used to, yeah. We had everything we wanted, then it was brilliant because we had all the information coming to us, and you know, what are we doing? What's going on behind the scenes? What, what who's working for what, and who's planting a tree where, and what have you? Everything was pretty yeah. much was good. Um, they, they went because of Dong. End of story. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I because mean, we, they we, were they were getting cr credit and publicity for doing such a wonderful job in the community, and they were, and they were, and, and they were, and he but thought a lot, he should of, have a lot of respect for Claire. And he thought would, he yeah. should have had all the credit. That was yeah. the problem. Right. So, Tom, no, should problem. we? Tom, should we be buzzing for the future now he's gone? Or is I think still... so. Yeah. I'm at. Well, there's, there's. I've got. There's that euphoria. You know, it's like being told your cancer's cured. Mm. You've yeah. got something else. You know, it's sort of like it's a dual thing. I, I'm so pleased because I was one of the, the the few that he didn't speak to because of what I wrote in the Birmingham Mail about. He didn't like the fact I called the club a shambles, which I thought it was at the time. Well, it yeah. was. No, and, no, he, he didn't like it. and he didn't <clears> speak <throat> at the end, but that didn't bother me. And I, I'll be honest with you, I've, from day one, I've always been friendly with the owners, friendly with the directors, welcome in the boardroom. I didn't want to be his friend. I didn't want to be anywhere near him mm. because of the way he treated people. No, I'm not talking about managers or players. I'm talking about how he treated his staff. Mm. Julia Shelton, Roger, Colin Tatum, all these people. Mm. abysmally and I'm sorry Leicester showed on the weekend a united club from top yeah. to bottom to achieve anything we were disunited yeah that frightened the death. but he's gone and and I think that's the important thing I don't think there'll be an appointment if you want my honest opinion I thought mm. that as well yeah I don't think there'll be an appointment I'll tell you why certainly not in the immediate future I think Lee will run the football Mr mm. Zhao will oversee it Mm -hmm. And you've got his senior managers running the club side. Does he really need anybody in the middle? I think the senior managers are good people. You've got Lee Bo, you're doing the job, and Zhao looking over it. If he does appoint somebody, then people are saying it's going to be Chinese. I don't accept that. I think it could no, be. No. 
Don't be they? Mr. Zhao there, it could be somebody who's in touch with the fans, can communicate, all the things Dong wasn't, he can bring the club together again. So, in the interim, no, but in, I do not think necessarily it'll be somebody from China. Well, well I mean, the boys are up in the chat. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, um, somebody, I mean, somebody of the ilk of like Mike Wiseman, someone like that, do you think he'd be a good um, appointment? He'd be a great chairman. I'm not too sure he'd be a great chief executive because he got his own business to run. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so, and I, I've spoken. I speak to Mike all the time, and mm. I mean, I think there's a man at the club who could do it, who's yeah. already turned down one CEO job somewhere else. That's Ian Dutton. Yeah, yeah. Ian could do it. He's got. He loves the club. Is is responsible for all the uh, money, and he's had an increase in revenues during the pandemic, which takes some doing, by the way. Oh, so mm. he's done that. He's got all the he's got the staff people, the staff like him, he's got everybody working. I think that side of it, leave Lee to do the football side with and buy new players with Mr. Zhao and Ian to run the club side. That's that would be my ideal, if I was honest with you. That's how I see it. Because I talk to him a lot, and all he does is talk about what he could do to improve it and what he could do to improve it for the supporters, not mm. for the sponsors, but he wants it to be a better experience for these. And you've already seen this week. We've had a communique about what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder yeah. what, what, what's changed to make that happen. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know Ian myself. Tommy's a great guy, and he's, you know, he'd be perfect for it. And he's bright and intelligent, and he's, yeah. he's waited long enough. He's been at the club a long time, earning his stripes from being in the sales department to running yeah. the sales department to being the commercial director. The sponsors adore him. Every yeah. week, he goes box to box to say hello and make sure people are okay. We yeah. have a do, the former players. He comes and speaks to people. He's got the... Listen, I don't know. All I know is if we're talking about somebody with the club at heart, the fans at heart, and a desire to work all hours to make it tick, then he's your man. Yeah, 100%. Here says Tom Ross, and I think that's seconded by each and every single one of us. Can I just say, I've already had people... I've already had some things through on social media saying, is the All-Stars match on Thursday open to the supporters? No, I'm sorry. I was going to... But it's actually, yeah. It's, it's it's still under COVID restrictions until the FA say differently or the EFL say differently. So all we're, I can't even bring family members of the players or mm. just the players are turning up and that's mm. it. Yeah. Is it, are you playing, who, who's it against, Tom? We're playing the um, great uh, box holder who's, who sponsors the former Players Association. We get the pitch once a year. And we're mm. playing them because they sponsor us. They keep us going and allow us to buy computers for disabled children and this sort of stuff. So they, they, they do yeah. a lot for us. Phil Walsh and his crew. His dad, funny enough, Phil's dad was the kit man at Blues. Oh, yeah. The days oh, when they were at Sedgemere. Yeah. So, so we're, we're playing them. And even I've had to say to him, you can't bring all the people you want, only the amount of players. And, I mean, I've had to get a list. We've had to let the club know who's coming. Oh, it's 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 just like the first team, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, it means that we can we can say our thank you to one of the sponsors. I think there's games almost every night at the club at the moment. Another question, That's Tom: Is Blues TV cover it? Sorry, Nick. Sorry, is yeah. Blues TV going to cover it? <laughs> no, no, I doubt it. They'd have to pay. They'd have to. They'd have to pay all the fans ten quid to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just see, we've got. We've got. A, we've got some good players. You know, we've got Paul Devlin, Darren Carter, Dealey had a bowler, Craig Gardner. You know, I've I've lost a load as well. Lee Carsley's at, at the with England. I've lost Jeff Kenner, who's ill. Nicky Eden's um, coaching in Jamaica. He's coaching yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah. And Downs. Yeah. So I've lost some good players, but we've got some good players. And Marcus Painter, who of course played for Swansea, Brighton, and us, mm. um, Marcus is coming to play for us as well for the first time. So we got we'll have a really good team out. So it'll be a, it'll be. Could, a couldn't I just put one camera on the halfway line and do it on YouTube or something? Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would we'll come and do it. We'll come and do it. Because, you know, oh, you know yeah. as, as, as just me and Morgan supporters, I'd, I'd I'd book half a day of work to watch it. <laughs> We kick, yeah, off at six o- <laughs> we kick off at six o'clock. But you know, the whole atmosphere, even even dealing with the club about I've got to be there tomorrow because I'm I'm hosting a thing on the pitch for one of their big sponsors on Saturday afternoon, got a big thing going on. And just dealing with the people at the club is different. There's a it's the gloom and doom has been lifted by the removal of one man. Mm, the gloom yeah. and doom has gone. Now I'm not saying Anything else other than if you can't be successful, be a happy club. 
Yeah. Do you know what, you know what, Tony? If you're if you're saying if you're saying you can feel that doom and gloom lifted and there's a different feeling about the place, uh, and and you are a man in the know because you're there so often, right? Uh, that that only bodes well for all of us supporters. I'll be honest with you. I think mm. music, music is a, more, the is a big difference. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. it's music to all of our ears, isn't it? No doubt about that. You know uh, why should yeah. why should listen? The the one thing that the lockdowns taught us all, and I wrote in the Birmingham Mail in my column in the Birmingham Mail in last February, this when it first started. One thing good to come out of lockdown will be that I hope that fans will be recognised how important they are. They yeah. are. Now we've yeah. seen that we the, the that crazy European Super League, the fans mm-hmm. won the day. And let me tell you, it isn't me, it isn't the BBC, it isn't talk. The people who've got rid of Dong are the fans. Yeah. The fans have got rid of him and full credit to them. Um, oh, look, yeah. look what done the flyover. Watford. Um the banners, the open letters, the the uh, all the forums and the Facebook pages and everybody getting together. And, and in, 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 again, it's been a team effort because nobody, but nobody wanted him. No disrespect. But as a chief exec, nobody wanted him. Mm. Nobody. Yeah. Well, but when he, when, he, when he brought in Ato Karanka first and he, he started to say, I've made mistakes, started up, I think that was an opportunity for him to win people. But yeah. he didn't take it. The arrogance remained. When all these banners were out, this is what I would have done. I'd have called a group of the fans in, sat them down in the boardroom and talked to them. Talk mm. to them. Mm. You've got to. Not we used to. <laughs> yeah. You've got to talk, talk to them. them. Yeah. But he, treat, he wouldn't communicate. It was dictatorship. And I think his negative profile and all the negativity and publicity that came from him, the Chinese owners were not having that. And they, they stuck it too long, though, Tom. Sorry, they stuck it for too long. Maybe but, they did. Maybe, but you don't know how, how much they knew what was going on. Mm. No, that's true. Mm. Nowadays, yeah, yeah. Having said, said that, I mean, said that there's the, uh, uh, the the chief exec. What's his name? No, not the chief exec. The one at the top. Oh, Zhao. Mr. Zhao. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Surely he would be communicating this. You know, we just had a plane fly over Watford with a Dong Out banner on the back of it. Yeah. If you mm. can't get sentiment from that, from open letters with over 2,000 people signing it, with banners, with uh, people standing outside the club shouting, if you can't grasp an understanding of what we're feeling like, yeah, perhaps mm. it's time for you to move on. You know what I also think that undone him? I think the fact that he didn't look happy that Blues were winning. Mm. No, yeah. Yeah, he didn't look happy at all, did he? And, and I think... I've, I, he sits in front of me, where I sit for TalkSport, he sits in front of me in no the, the old director's box on the old main stand. And before he'd jump up, he'd be shouting at the referees, he'd be doing this, that and the other. When Lee Bowie was there, never once, never moved, never applauded, never cheered. And I knew that he was angry. He didn't want Lee Bowie to succeed, in my opinion. He didn't want him to uh, succeed. All selfish desires of one man caused us all that much trouble. Mm. Sounds like he was just full of his own self-importance and massaging his own ego all the time. Maybe. I, mean, I don't. Mm. I, I don't. Well, as I said, I don't know him that well. No. I mean, you know, he, he was. But whenever I've sat next to him at a at a do, and if I'm honest, he was charming. You know, but it was like there was. I know you. You all know. You know when somebody's being nice, or when they're being warm, or when they're just putting on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're being false. Mm. Yeah, I didn't ever feel that warmth with him. And I think the fans, I full credit to the fans, and they, they'll have my undying gra- uh, you know, uh, gratefulness because to get rid of him, and I didn't think it would happen, I thought he was untouchable with the Chinese. Mm. Just shows you how wrong you can be. In got me. It, what got me was when he moved his office down to the training ground. That was that for me. No, but it wasn't his what? office. Mm. The, what, the training ground was not his office. It was mm. Mr. Zhao's office. The sign, on the, doors, the sign on the door says chairman. Ah, mm. but he was in there acting yeah. Mr. Big Time with his tracksuit on the touchline and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Something, by the way, Lebo, you would have none of. No. Years. Well, mm. it's great to hear this, and it's great to think now that it's all, you know, hopefully a massive dark cloud. Well, it sounds like it has happened. A massive dark cloud has gone, and mm. you know we can um, we can we can move forward now in a in a much more positive way. Yeah. Uh, what we've done is get back to square one. I mean, we haven't really. Time will tell, won't it? 
you yeah. know, um, the <laughs> The rebirth of the blues in my lifetime has happened a hundred times. You know, there's uh, had to be phantom pregnancies most of the time. Yeah. 90 in Chris Brown, I'm an 86 in mine. Yes. <laughs> we're, looking now to, for, we're looking upward. You yeah. can't dwell on the past. He's gone. He's over. He's finished. And I think we are, we are wasting valuable time talking about the Muppet. Yeah, 100%. Let's, let's, let's find out more about you, Tom. Anyway, I want to know. What started you in doing what you do? Anyway, take us back to the beginning. Who spotted you and who gave you the opportunity to, to um, be a broadcaster, etc.? Well, I tell you, was it Trevor Francis was the big influence. All right. Really? Well, okay. I was, I, had a, I was at home one day in Sutton. The phone went, hello, Trevor Francis here. And I've gone, I thought it was my mate. I went, oh. <laughs> get out of it. And it was Trevor. He said, Jeff Greaves tell me you're into music. Um, who was our commercial director at the time, he said, can you come over to my house and we'll go through the records? And I went, yeah, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and he told Jeff Greaves to, to employ me as the pitch announcer playing the music. Uh -huh. So I did that. And the next step then was somebody said, look, on the mic, you sound all right. Go to hospital radio, learn your trade. Yeah. So I went to hospital radio and then I was there a bit and Tim Russon gave me a job at uh, BBC w, Radio Birmingham, as it was then, covering the Birmingham City <laughs> And my first game was Blues against Ajax, 1978, August the 7th, pre-season friendly. Oh. So I covered that game for BBC and I'd been there a while and I got a call one day and a voice went, hello, <laughs> meet me at the D Club. Tony Butler. Tony Butler. Meet, <laughs> I met him at the D Club and this is the God's honest truth. His first words were, right, tomorrow, Stoke against Blues. That was the interview. <laughs> 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 so I went to Stoke and it was nil nil, March the 28th, 1981. Uh -huh. So I went there, nil nil, and I thought I'd done a good job. And the following day, I was playing at football at Tally Ho for the BRMB team. And I've gone in the dressing room, and all the players are there, and George Gavin, all the lads. And he, I felt really chuffed with myself. And Butler looked up and he went, If that's the best you can do, it's off back to the. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit that bit out. For me, I thought, I honestly thought, now, I realise now he was testing me. Mm. He was going to crumble and cry and go home to my mum and say, I'm walking out. But no, I went, I'll show you. Yeah. And that's what yeah. that's what he was after. Yeah. That's exactly what he was after. And the rest, as they say, is, is history. history. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, growing up, growing up all through my life so far, supporting the Blues, you know, you just memories of just listening to you after every game, you know. Yeah, extra M and Adam, yeah. Adam, Adam with George you... Gavin on a Friday evening. George <laughs> Gavin and you, yeah. Blues um, fans used to ring up on a Friday and go, uh, can I speak to Tom? No, speak to me first. You're not speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> the Blues fans did it deliberate and we loved it because it was it created that little atmosphere yeah, between yeah. us, yeah. Which, which it turned out to be in the end, before he left BRMB, true, we didn't get on. But at that time, it was part of the, the wonderful atmosphere on a Friday night ahead of a game. It was just wonderful. Just amazing. Yeah. 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 And the sports, gonna... the sports forums as well, the, the sports forums that you've done over the years. Yeah. Sticky in my mind as well, you know. I remember, remember Barry Fry at the Sedgemere going back to the mid-90s. That was just brilliant that night. God. Well, it was, I mean, before then, we did one with um, Dave Mackay mm. at the, I think it was Yardley, maybe the Yardley ex servicemans with, with Dave Mackay. The first question... First question, George does all the intro. Here's Dave McKay. Let's go. And I was a gun mic then. I had the microphone. I was standing next to this guy. Let's go to him. Hello, Bill here from Acock Screen. Dave, when are you going to get off? That's really we've had now. That was the first thing. Excuse my language. That was the get the blue machine out tomorrow. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, but yeah. that was what happened, you know? And yeah. it was it was like good grief. That was my introduction to the forums. But they became legendary and... The and best then, one, though, the best one for me, one of the best was with David Sullivan and Karen Brady at the Austin Sports and Social. Mm. We got 700 people in the room. It only holds 500. We got 700 in and we turned down over 3,000 applications. Oh, wow. 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 That was about 94. It should have been. The Andrews. Yeah. They'd only just arrived at the club then. Yeah. 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 They'd only just been arrived normal. at the club. And... Then, you know, that was stood out. I think when you, the one with Craig Gardner and Liam Ridgewell two days before the Carling Cup final was just, mm. that was, that was, I can't remember where that was, but it was special because 
there was that much hap- I'm looking at the blues fans who were singing keep rides on the happiness in their faces because we're going to web we're going when well, no, I was them it was um, no Tom that wasn't happiness that was anticipation <laughs> yeah, that's right oh, they're going to Wembley you know and I just loved it mate it was it's been a it's won- a wonderful journey and the one thing I miss most now is that doing the phoning if I'm honest mm, yeah phoning. oh yeah we all do I'm doing, we all miss I'm doing Trevor Francis at the Speedway Sports and Social Barry Fry I'm doing Martin O'Connor Paul Tate and Paul Devlin at the Meadway Sports so I'm still doing the forums yeah but I'm yes. phoning I miss that interaction yeah oh, all right we, we, all, we all miss that you there gentlemen uh, right. Chris can you organise a phoning session on a Friday night <laughs> oh that'd be great <laughs> wouldn't it <laughs> oh god don't we miss that Oh, yeah. so, so missed that. After the stars the, of the show after the, the game. Blues. They're yeah, the stars. Yeah. Blues fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. After the game. Oh, that was great. It Brilliant. Used to, used to be fantastic. <laughs> Lee, the Baggies fan. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Oh, just, if ever you've got chance, go on to YouTube and put in Lee, the Baggies fan. And somebody, yeah. somebody has put, put it to rap music. Okay. It's, oh, really? Oh, okay. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Now, I know I've told you this before, Tom, but um, uh, I think you've got on mute, Tom, to be honest with you. It's because my dogs are barking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> my son came up from Dorset. I live in Utox in Staffordshire. Yeah? I mean, he came up from Dorset for a couple of days. Uh, yeah. He was chatting away to him on Friday night. And I says, oh, we've got Tom Ross on a Monday night. And he went, he trod on him. He trod on him. He trod on him. <laughs> Yeah. You remember that, but that was a foul against Nicholas Zigic, Zigic, right? And you said he trod on him nine times because <laughs> <laughs> Luke remembers it to this day, bless him. And he, I, as I as got caught up in it, mate. I he can't remember it. other things. <laughs> I, I got, my, my producer sends me stuff. And funny enough, now I'm doing the podcast, I, I get all my old stuff and I cringe at some of the stuff, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, it's right at the time, though. Yeah, you're in the moment yeah. there, Tom. Yes, yeah, in the man. moment is exactly the words, and you don't realise what you're saying. And my, right, bloopers, Tom. I want to, I want to ask you about bloopers. <laughs> what's uh, what's some good bloopers you've done over the years? The worst blooper didn't involve blues. The worst of all time, and it made Central, it made the FA, it made everywhere. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was in West Brom against Wolves, and um, oh, who was they bringing on? Wolves were bringing on a striker who. He was hopeless. I can't even... His name will come to me in a minute. Steve Bull. Got, <laughs> no, I've gone to, no, Bully was great. I've got to Tom Bomber Brown. Great news for Albin because he's useless, him. <laughs> Literally, his first touch, he scored. Scored. <laughs> oh, no. And, and I got dog... I, oh, no. Nick Hancock, who did the... He had me on that programme, he had midweek sports central thing that he did. Uh, oh, yeah, the Stoke fan. Yeah. Stoke fan, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Stoke, yeah, Stoke yeah, fan. Yeah. Stoke and I was yeah. so embarrassed. And and the reason I f- felt like that, when I told Mick McCarthy, who was the manager at the time, Mick said, no, you're right, he's useless. <laughs> so, so I had the manager's <laughs> approval, but I felt guilty. And you know what? I've never done it since, never done it before. I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. Mm-hmm. It was wrong of me to, to do that. And to be fair, I went to the player, his name will come to me in a minute, and I apologise to him. You know, big man. Yeah. We're talking mid two thousands, Tom. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, yeah, I can't. It'll come to me in a minute. Um, Trying to think who played. Uh, um, Bothroy. No, keep... Bothroy. Joe Bothroy. Bothroy. Oh, yeah, Bothroy. Bothroy. Yeah. Yeah. Bothroy. Yeah. Bothroy. Yeah. yeah, Bothroy. Yeah, he was you, Tom. <laughs> he was you. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and apologised because it was the right thing to do because I was unprofessional that day, and I realise it. Mm. Do you, do you know him? what? Even when do we're doing him? this this level, it is so difficult sometimes to not be unprofessional, like, you know, to, to make that ultimate mistake. And, and you've really got to stop and think. I mean, this is going out literally live. We've got no five seconds delay, no 10 seconds delay, no nothing. What we say is what we say is what goes out and that's it. And you do have to put yourself on the line and, and say, look, you know, you, I've got to be really careful. I mean, we were talking about, you, you know, I know we weren't going to discuss it, but we were talking about Dong a little while ago. And, and, and Steve, you've brought him up again. I know, I know. <laughs> I know I, yeah. <laughs> 10 five. <laughs> yeah, you know, him he, he you shall not be named. Though, you get what I'm saying? You have to be so aware of what comes mm-hmm. out of your mouth. Absolutely right. Yeah. Then go on, uh, and it's hard, hard, isn't it, when you're passionate? It's hard. It is, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and when you, <laughs> <laughs> well, he must have, heard, he must have heard you, Tom, because he went on to win an England cap. 
Yeah, but, <laughs> hey, I'm not being funny. So did Michael Ricketts, so don't tell me that. <laughs> I was going to say somebody else, but I won't know. Chris? <laughs> <laughs> but it, no, listen, I shouldn't knock them because any player that wears that England shirt even once should be really proud. So I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm having a laugh really. But mm. you, you see where I'm coming from. I was unprofessional. I apologise to the player. And the second blooper, <laughs> the second blooper also involved Wolves. Me and Matt Murray were doing commentary on a Wolves game, and we used to do it for their uh, their house TV and for their website. So they take our commentary. Right. And at halftime, I was supposed to unplug it at halftime. Well, I forgot. <laughs> and oh, after no. we're in the, we've gone, me and, and I'm chatting to Matt. God, she's fit, uh, that player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at her, mate. Not a, oh, look. They got, it on in the, they got it on in the dressing room at halftime. Oh. The <laughs> players were falling about laughing. <laughs> Oh, uh, Chris Brad, I think I need to remind you of the one time that we did that. Yeah, we we, we did something like that, didn't we? I forgot, oh. forgot to switch the mics off, didn't I? Yeah. It was cringeworthy as well, that wasn't got it? Got me out of jail a li- yeah. just a just a little bit. Um, but the, the funny moments happen. Again, we were doing we were doing a, a forum uh, at a golf club, and Matt Murray was my guest, and Darren Carter and Ian Taylor, and we're doing this forum. And my guest to come in was Blind Dave Healy. Blind Dave, what a legend he is, by mm. the way. He's done the one who did seven marathons, seven days. He's raised fortunes. He's an absolute diamond. They've just made a film about his life. About he, time, yeah, because he's brilliant. He mm. came in and he sat down and uh, we're chatting away and then we go to the break. And uh, as we're coming out the break, like Dave carries on talking, not realising, you see, because he can't see. So Matt Murray, the plank, Matt Murray's going to him, <laughs> not realising Dave's blind so I said Dave you'll never guess what happened and I told Dave on air I told him and all Dave could say because he's a big Albion fan all Dave yeah, could say not surprising is a dingle <laughs> so, <laughs> you see that's the banter that football's about not hatred no. yeah and from Birmingham City fans well done to Big Dave for everything he's done and absolute legend didn't they make a film of it did he make a film didn't he Tom yes well? I've got a, I've got a, yeah. they've just made a film a proper film proper film yeah. and I I, um, I had a, a little a little role in that playing myself interviewing him after after one of his marathons right but um, seven marathons seven days he ran across the desert yeah I yeah. mean what he swam with sharks he ran he swam from Alcatraz through shark infested. Yeah, and nobody would bite a baggage fan there, would they? <laughs> no. Nah, well, nobody would swallow it, that's for sure. If the teacher had said Albion to win the cup, so no, no shark could swallow that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got absolutely hundreds of questions. I'll, I'll, I'll... I've been on the share box as well, Chris. Yeah, there's thousands. Of, um, right. I'll, go, I'll start, I'll go backwards. Who was the worst, best manager, worst or and best manager to interview, Tom? Steve Cottrell, the worst. Mm. Really? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Didn't yeah. have to think about that, did you, Tom? No. no. Well, because no. listen, it's weird, really, because everything was about whatever. I mean, here's a typical example. I remember saying to him one time, you know, interviewing him before the game, Steve, the first goal could be very important in this game. No. And you haven't been in the arena, have you? The first goal's not important. What is important is the amount of goals you get. So I went, fair enough, that's your opinion. Made me look a bit of a dick. Anyway. The following day, I interview him after the game, and he said, uh, "I forget. I think Blues had drawn one-one, and he went. First goal was vital, and I've gone. <laughs> and you taking the peel? What? That was that annoyed me because he didn't treat me with respect, but he was expected <clears throat> to treat me with respect, and I I didn't like. But funny enough, a week after he was sacked, I got a call at home, and he was on the phone for an hour chatting away like we were best pals. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it was a, maybe it was just as a manager he felt he had to be that way. That was the thing. Ron Saunders could be a Serbic. I got on with Ron, but he could be really a, Ron was worse when they'd won. Mm. He was better when they lost Ron. Mm. Um, John Bond was great. I've not had a problem. Willie Bell was a bit weird, if I'm honest. Why? <laughs> right. I was just a bit. I wasn't sure about him. Sir Ralph. Yeah, Sir Ralph was Sir Ralph, wasn't he? Speaking in that plummy voice, he was yeah. just. Yeah. What you see but but all of them have been ab- Steve Bruce was magnificent, Alex McLeish, brilliant, Lee Clark, fantastic. Zola was fantastic to talk to. Harry Redner. Listen, 
we're all doing a job, you know. Yeah. And I like a man who will answer the questions. And if you don't want to answer it, he won't stop you asking it. He might say, I don't want to answer that, or I'm not going to answer that. But he don't stop you asking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's the important yeah, thing. Put, you know? put it another way, are there, were there some managers more cooperative than other managers, would you say? They've all been brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. That's, that's good. I think in the modern game, for example, Julio could, at Villa, Julio could be an absolute nightmare if he had one on him. Mm. Let me God. I mean... Um, Tim Sherwood, oh my God, he was he was a handful. You know, I remember having a row with him when he said, my players don't give a monkeys about the FA Cup. And I went, oh, 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 and I remember saying, that's the saddest interview I've ever done. Mm. And he was talking about the Premier League money and all that sort of stuff. But that, and I realised then the game had changed beyond recognition to what we know. Yeah. Luckily, at you know, they've got Dean Smith, who's great to talk to. Slavon Bilic was wonderful. Nuno's a nightmare at Wolves, if I'm honest. He don't want to talk to you. He don't, want, he don't like the press. He don't want the press there. End of. So mm. I don't go there. Um, but generally, they've been good as gold, if I'm honest. Really good as gold. Chris, did you end up to interview Brian Clough? I'm yes, going to say about Clough, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I did. I, I remember because I used to, part of, it wasn't part of my job, but I used to, when I'd finished doing the tannoy, I used to have to go down to the dressing room and knock, take the managers to the press box to the, meet the press. And I remember knocking on the door, um, knocking on the door. Mr. Were Clough, you terrified? No, no. Mr. Clough, could you speak to the press? And he was brilliant. Young man, I don't talk to him. Thank you. Shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, He's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I mean, he, was, he was, for me, Cloughy and Bill Shankly was brilliant. Bill Shankly was just amazing to he he would treat you like you were you were a proper person. Bill Shankly didn't oh, you are, the, so you are, everybody else is, and that's how we treat everybody on this show without a doubt. So it's right the right way to be. If you treat me right, I'll treat you right. No airs and graces. You know right. what? I've only ever been slightly overwrought once, and I know I've said this many times. That was when I interviewed Joe Gallagher because my dad took me to the, my very mm. first game and he played in that game. And then when I interviewed Joe, I'm sitting next to that man that. My dad said to me, keep your eye on that number five, keep your eye on that number five. And, uh, yeah, you know, wow. I mean, for me, brilliant. Goosebumps, Super goosebumps, goosebumps, goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, have the same. Uh, uh, sorry, I had the <laughs> same with Blues. If you remember the video um, that came out, the VHS video, the history of the Blues. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I put that, that together. I narrated it. Mm. I worked with the people to get to buy the film. We bought the film from Pathé Pictorial, all the old pictures. Oh, the club right. has hijacked it and used it, by the way, but I won't say anything about that. But oh, nevertheless, we did that. all that. And the one day, Bertie Old was coming down from Scotland and I'd got it. Really? Blimey. And I'm, uh, no, not Bertie Old, Alex Govan. Alex Govan, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I am Keep like this. On. I am shaking because yeah. he was my dad's favourite and, mm. and I couldn't wait. And then I, I interviewed him. And he suddenly started singing Keep Right On on the video. You can wow. see it. Yeah. And it was it had airs on the back of my neck. And when we finished it, I said, Alex, I've got to tell you, my dad, you're his hero. I said, the reason I'm a Blue Nose is my dad came from Scotland, from Glasgow, and he came to Blues because of you. He could have gone to Villa, but he came to Blues because of you. And he went, oh, what's his name? I said, Tommy, every day till he died, every Christmas till he died, he sent me dad a Christmas card. Too bad. Every oh, day till he died. Wow. Keep right on, Tommy. Keep right on, Alex. I'm, go, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that again now. Adam, you want, Adam, you want you to come in with something, Adam? Adam, I've had a comment pinned for a while. Uh, it's from Paul Gill. He says, "Who is your favourite co-commentator, and is there anyone you wish you could have commentated with that you haven't done?" I wish I could have worked with David Coleman. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd have loved to work with him. I'd love to just listen to be in the studio watching the maestro at work. But the best with me. The best pundits, and I've had some belters. Um, Bomber Brown's been fantastic at Albion. Um, Matt Murray has been great. Andy Thompson at Wolves. Blues, Broadhurst. John McCarthy was a dream. McCarthy, yeah. One of my best at Blues was Gary Rowett. Mm -hmm. Three years travelling with Gary. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, I've had some real good ones. But at one time, I did the punditry. And I worked with Ian Crocker, who was part of my sports team. And I worked with Jim Proudfoot, who was part of my sports team, and Adam Bridge. So there's quite a few people who've gone on to be big names in TV that came through the Ross Academy, you know. And and I'm something I'm something I'm really proud of. 
is the amount of youngsters that have learned, listened, and now are forging a wonderful career themselves. And right, Tom, Stephen, Stephen, Tom Stephen Gill says, did you spot um, Ian Danta? Yes. Well, I didn't spot him. I got a letter from a, a guy who worked with him saying, Ian Danta does a great impression of you. <laughs> Have a listen to this. Hi, Craig. Hi, oh, Craig. He, he, oh, sent, Craig. he sent me a vid. Uh, a Please, man. And I heard Danta, so I called Danta and got him in, and I said, right, every Saturday on the show, would you like to do two minutes of impressions of Barry Fry and all the rest? He went, yeah, I'd love to. And that was how he started in the game, you know. So, right. And now he's doing a wonderful job. I used to deliver newspapers to his dad's house, Tom, when I was a kid, so I could get enough money to go to the Blues on a, on a Saturday. To dance dads? Yep, dance dads in Castle Street in Warwick. Because he was a big, massive cricket fan, his dad as well. Was he? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. What, what, what was your favourite goal, Tom, that you commentated on? If you could go back and relive one goal that you were commentating on in that moment, the way you felt, which one would it be and why? Ooh. Oh, that's tough. Cup, the penalty, the Garrett, yeah. Garrett, no, yeah. young, young, young Darren Carter taking that penalty, and and in the build-up to that penalty, mm. I remember saying to Broads, "Oh, shouldn't be letting a kid take this." <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> nine yeah. years, nine years before that, I'd presented him with his trophy at Arden Forest Colts. <laughs> I presented him with a wow. trophy. Nine <laughs> years later, he's scoring the penalty, which I'm screaming at. So that was a wonderful goal. Paul Caddis of Bolton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I lost it. Mm. Um, the obviously the Oberfemi Martins. I just could not believe it. No, neither could I. What, what about, what about yeah. the Gailey goal? Would you, was you? Did yeah, you John Gailey. Yes, did you do, did yes I did. I, funny enough, the the Leyland Daff final was the I did because I don't know what it was. I got on great with Lou McCary and Lou let me be. Let me let me do my commentary from the bench. So I sat next oh, to Oppie the right, sub. Yeah. I sat next to Oppie. <laughs> 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 And I've got my tracksuit on with my initials on. Off, 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 <laughs> no. And I forgot all my responsibilities. It's unprofessional. But I forgot <laughs> my responsibilities. Because when the whistle went and they got the cup, I did a lap of honour with the team with the cup. I didn't help me. You've got to be carried away. I couldn't yeah. help it. I'm sorry, I couldn't. I deserved oh. it because at the semi-final, yeah, yeah. they'd thrown me in the bath at Brentford. <laughs> what, about, what, what about when we Tom what about when we played them up the road on their ground obviously in the early Premier League days and yeah you know, wow. the Enkelman and all that was you in where was you yeah I did the commentary yeah was you and in there, seats up and all sorts they were oh <laughs> I mean to be fair it it was it was surreal that because people say once you get in the moment, it don't matter who scores because you're commentating not on what you're thinking, but what you're watching. So it yeah. don't matter who scores. But when Blues score, it is a bit different. But in the Premier League, I, I was probably a bit subdued with the Enkelman because I couldn't believe he'd done it. In <laughs> <honesty>. <laughs> but I, I remember the Clint was it Clinton scored as well, didn't he? Yeah, he scored. Yeah, yeah. Clinton scored. I remember going wild with that. But I mean, this is how crazy it gets. You remember the Stern John equaliser? Yeah. yeah. Banked it in. Yeah. I never scored it. I never passed it. I didn't get an assist. Mm. I was bump. I got programs, scarves, rattles, everything thrown at me from the crowd in front of me. <laughs> 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 nothing to do with me. <laughs> but, uh, but they're all, listen, every goal is special um, because that's Absolutely. what the game's about. And But I think my first one, I can't remember, but those are all those are the special ones. The Leyland Daff, the overhead kick of John Gale was just oh, sensational. Was a, um, to be fair, is yeah. I'd watch. I'd been training with him at Reading College, and he was doing. He was practicing shooting, and he couldn't get hit the proverbial cow's backside with the bat. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't, and he lies because I'd pulled him about it I, at the Blue Slings at the club when I've, I said, "Gailey, you were useless." He went, you t "I said you kept putting over that." 20 foot wall and having to get fetching, he went, No, it's a lie. Well, I found a photograph of him climbing over the wall. <laughs> but that was special. But if I'm honest, the penalty that took Blues into would probably just about. Yeah. It's probably too. it's probably a tie with Oberfemi Martins. Yeah, yeah. That would be my favorite bit of from you. My ever, lifetime so ever. far. Oh, Paul, one second. My favorite commentary from Tom ever was 
you can hear the sound of bubbles popping all over <laughs> yeah, the yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll never forget yeah. those words. I want those words on my gravestone when I die. <laughs> uh, my bus Alan, t- Alan, uh, Alan, have you got any t- uh, any questions for Tom, mate? Yeah, that, uh, you slightly touched on it, but how how did you cope when you were doing the other lot against somebody not in not not blues? Uh, and the opposition scored. Uh, you could. How easy was it to not express your feelings? <laughs> shall we put it that way? Stay impartial. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less. Working. I'm on my own time now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but listen, I have no hatred because I've become great friends with a lot of ex-Villa players and yeah. ex-Villa managers. John Gregory is a really good friend of mine. I have. <coughs> Ron Atkinson, I have no problem with them. Obviously, Blues are my team through and through. Absolute, to the day I die, it will be Blues. But do I want Villa to lose every week? No. Do I want West Brom to lose every week? No. What I want is, I want to look at the Premier League and see us three or four at the top of the table, not Man City yeah. and Man U. Yeah, and yeah, I get you, Tom. Then there's yeah. another question that has to be posed, right? You're commentating on a Blues B6 game, <laughs> you obviously want the Blues to win. No, I th- or can, I, you, can you switch yourself off that see, No, you can want Blues to win. Of course you mm, can. Mm. But what I can't do is say that because I'm a professional. And when you're yeah. commentating, I'm not giving an opinion when I'm commentating. I'm actually telling you what's happening in front of me. And yeah. I'm actually relaying what's happening. Yeah. But if, it, for example, if Villa scored and I went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then, yes, you'd have a point. But I, I, that isn't what I do, you know. It's, yeah. But, yeah. But how Tom, do you manage, though, Tom, to heighten the tones <laughs> of this when they score? Yeah. Because, you know, oh, no, 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 it's a goal! It's professional, isn't it? it because, listen, every time you go to a football match, I could, I watched the other night, um, and who did I see score? It was an absolute Tielemans, Leicester. Oh, oh yeah, brilliant. Oh, I would have loved to have commentated on that. What a strike that was. So yeah. you get caught up in the moment for any goal when you're a commentator. But in my heart, I'm blues through and through. You know, to be fair, I'm not a glory on am I? No. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not I'll tell you what, I think that's where you get the most respect from all Birmingham City fans is that you are one of us, through and through, like you say, and uh, there's no airs and graces on you. You are what you are. You get what you get. You see what you see. But, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you this, right? If you think Tom's job is easy, next time there's a game on the TV, turn off the volume, get your two <laughs> lists of your players in front of you and try it because it it's is easy. more difficult than anybody can imagine. And um, one that I did, the, the Blues Ladies in the Champions League semi final. And the guys from the BBC and Talksport, they would just be eyeing me in the press boxes and they were going. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever cocked it up, John? Tom? Have you ever cocked it up when you know you've got players wrong or you know got a long, you need a whole program? <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it is easy to sometimes what you the art is sometimes it's, blues have got the worst floodlights in the championship. Yeah. Even managers, right. opposing managers. Paul Warren said to me, the Rotherham guy, he said, no, he said, we know if we cross it from this side, their keeper's going to struggle with the light. I mean, this is, this is, this is, a, you go to Wolves and Villa, West, the light is amazing. Derby County, amazing. Blues, shadows, it's not. So sometimes when something happens in the area and, and it's a bit, and I'm not really sure, I keep talking till I am sure to see you celebrating. That's what I do. You know, you, yeah. just, you, you elongate the celebration of the goal. You know, in the Premier League, it's no problem because you've got replays on a TV screen. We haven't got that at Birmingham. There's no TV screens, nothing. It, right. What you see is what you do. And it's the same with uh, West Brom when they're in the so, Champions So with that then, Tom, right, OK. How do you go around the country and remember so many names of the, all these players and and then just switch on at the start of a game and, you, and you, you, you've you got it? You well, know, I mean, it's it's wrong, that's, that's any professional before. commentator I'm talking about, Tom. But, like... I can't even remember what I did this morning. <laughs> well, what I do is I get I, I I have both teams. I work. I get all the st- everything ready. Both teams, their last game. Yeah. They at the last game, so I know what changes are being made. 
I put alongside their name how many goals they've got this season. If there's a little special note on loan from Man U, all goes in there. So I've got it there if I need it. And that's it. Then it's there, but I tend to try and follow the game. And I know if it's the right back, it's pretty much going to be Maxime Collin. If I know it's the left, you know what I mean? That's how I work. Yeah, yeah. But it comes with experience, mate. Like anything else in life, you know, I'm sure the, the man who did the first heart transplant does them a lot better now than he did the first one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. It's good yeah, yeah. Good I get that. It's, just, it's, it's know, a meeting. And I just can't, I can't remember anything, so. Yeah. Some yeah. of my early ones, I'm sure, were horrendous. You know, if I'm honest. You know, <laughs> but... <laughs> I remember the commentary on Kenny Lowe's goal against um, Charlton. The non-league oh, yeah. Glenn Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I thought I thought Barry was trying to butcher him up, but he was actually right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna bring in Craig Courtney right now. Craig, can you give us uh, updates on the shirts and the football card, please, buddy? Yeah, so we've got twenty-six numbers left now um on the on the card. Um so anybody that wants to go, two pound to go, three for a fiver. We'll try and fill that card tonight and then we'll do the draw if we can before the end of the show. But if not, afterwards. Um, you mentioned at the beginning the amounts of money raised so far. So, yeah, we're not far off £4,000 now in total Whoa. since we started the yeah, lockdown. Amazing. That's is it. that including That's the brand excellent. that I've got here, Craig? It is indeed. Yeah, yeah Nick, okay. it's including all of that that you've got as well. How do yeah. you play? How do you, play? How, do you, how do you get paid? Well, Sharon, yeah. Sharon's going to have Sharon's going to have her hair dyed bright blue. <laughs> She's got about 800 quid for that. Um, we've How got, do I pay to get on the card? How do I get one of these numbers? Oh, you just oh. say so and then just send a fiver in the post. Yeah, five. it's uh, it's on uh, Just Giving, isn't it, uh, Craig? Oh, is it, it on is Just Giving? giving? Day, yeah, Just Giving, yeah. Just go to our page, uh, Tom. And, uh, it's yeah. on your page, right? Yeah, it's okay. on our, well, yeah, I'll it's have on, a go. I'll have a page, go. Yeah. Have a go, have a go What's the prize, by the way? It's oh, it's a good prize. What is it, Craig? It's easy, it's, uh, <laughs> as if you can't remember. <laughs> it's done it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> Signed shirt from the 2006-2007 promotion winning squad. Yeah, it's a great one. There you go. Excellent. One. Now that is worth having. Right, put me down for a five as well. Chris, I'll send you my favours. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take the come. same. I'll take the same and I'll put it on just giving this evening. Brilliant, brilliant. We've also got this we've, we've got another shirt that's coming up soon, which was which was sent to us from uh, Marlon King, which is uh, Marlon, yeah. The one behind me there, it's uh, fully signed that so we'll do that in the off season as well, try and raise a bit more a bit more money. Yeah, yeah. There's a funny story to that shirt, isn't it? There is a funny oh, story. Yeah. There is a f- yes, maybe, maybe <laughs> Craig. We got sent. <laughs> Go on, Craig. Explain, explain. Tell us what happened. Tell us what happened with the shirt. Uh, well, we 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 asked uh, Marlon to uh, to send us a shirt for the charity money, and he was he was fantastic. You straight away he said, "Yep, no problem." Was he and the after one a couple of weeks, going through his bin, showing us all the shirts in his bin. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. <laughs> And after uh, after that, he sent us for a shirt. We got all excited. We thought, fantastic. It's all nice and signed. Yeah. And then when we looked at it, it was a signed Nottingham Forest shirt. So <laughs> we had to send it back. <laughs> the wrong one. And the, and, the, and the Nottingham Forest fans would have got a blue shirt, would they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember opening and thinking, no, I don't, I don't remember this one. <laughs> I don't remember this. I don't remember this. This crest at all. Yeah. yeah. So what we'd like to do, guys, is get that football card filled tonight. Twenty-six quid, right? Tom, you've had a five. I've had a five. So that's sixteen quid left. Sixteen pound. That's just three of you putting a fiver down, or sixteen of you putting a pound down. All right. Or, or you know, just come on. Let's get it filled tonight. Let's get it drawn tonight. Live on the very yeah, last. Let's get it drawn tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, can we go on to uh, let's go on to Alan now on fan cam and uh, yeah. tell us a bit about. Obviously, what got you into Blues to start with? And obviously, I know where you sat for the best part of 10 years of, of that time. Because <laughs> uh, he was literally in the row in front of me for 10 years before I moved up to uh, behind me. But yeah, give, give us a bit of an into uh, how you started going, Alan, and um, what your first game was and that kind of thing. Well, my dad, my dad, my dad played for Blues uh, between 43 and 44, but before he went off and won the war for us. Um, <laughs> and when he came out... Uh, he, he married my mum and he played a few reserve games, which uh, he had a, a nasty turn on a frozen pitch in Watford. And that was the end of his professional career. But he, he, he played good amateur football after that. Mm-hmm. So he, to, he used to tell me a story when he was a lad, when I was a lad, <laughs> about uh, his second game was at um, 
that other place against that other lot. Yeah. Uh, but it was Birmingham's home game. And uh, he was up, he was a centre forward, my dad, and he was up against a bloke called Mush Callahan. Tom, Tom will remember him, yeah? I don't uh, remember seeing him, but I remember he's revered at Villa Park. That's right. Well, he had a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. He really was an ugly man. <laughs> <laughs> and he, apparently, the old man went past him uh, and he gave him, you know, you're trying to be clever, son, you'll end up in row, whatever. Well, my old man took no, um, he, he, he wasn't frightened of anybody. Uh, he was only 18 at the time. Anyway, got a long story short, he scored the winner. Oh. Uh, and I beat the beat the B sixes two one, and he he once said to me, I used when I was a kid, he saw a sort of soft spot for them lot. He said, but after he played against them, he couldn't stand them. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was that was that was the sort of family tradition. And the, the the thing the thing that got me going to the Blues, funny enough, was the Jeff Hall incident. Because I was nagging my dad to go, and oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I got, you know, like again, Tom will remember this. Okay. Everybody, when Jeff Hall died, it was such a shock. Mm. You know, he, he, two days after he he played, he was taken ill, and two weeks later, he was dead. Mm. And mm. everybody, and I got dragged off to, you know, have me jab and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And my first games were about three or four months after that. Um, and there, there was there was Jeff Hall um, memorial games and whatever. And I, the first game was a, a, a friendly against Valencia, and I, we lost three two. And I got, I remember the old man dragging me out five minutes before the end to get the bus, uh, the fifty eight back to Sheldon. Yeah. Uh, and I was I was well, we could score, we might equalise, and I hated it, but we always had to do it because if we didn't. You know, you'll be in a queue 40, 40 yards long yeah. to get on the bus. Uh, uh, but obviously when I got older and uh, we we started going by car, you know, I, I've, I've, I've never I've never left early since. Um, you know, I'm, even though I live I live in in Sussex now, and I got I got to get the train by half past five. Uh, I'm, I'm 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 waiting for that whistle to go at the top of the stairs, and I'm gone yeah, um, yeah. because it's. Uh, it's only four and a half hours. That's a good old journey, that is. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. And if, 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 if I don't get the six o'clock one, uh, you know, it's 11 o'clock before I get back here. Um, so that's that's sort of it. I mean, I uh, like Tom, I've, I've, I've seen Blues play in eight, eight different decades. Um, you know, the I go back to Bertie Auld, Jimmy Harris and... Terry Hennessy was my first big favourite player, mm. uh, and I really was upset when they sold him. Um, he was he was the, he was he was the Jude Bellingham of his day. He was wonderful, um, <coughs> Terry Hennessy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've had we, we've had sort of ups and downs over the years. Uh, and the thing was, we've always come, we've we've been in a few troughs mm. in my time, but we've always come back. And yeah. I spoke spoke to people I know around the country really when when their clubs and I said don't worry because I've got a friend who supports Blackburn and they was in a bit of a mess and I said don't worry because people care people mm. care about Blackburn Rovers and people on, care about yeah. Birmingham City yeah. and yeah. all this garbage we've been through you know. The fan, the, the the fans, as you say, the fans got rid of Mister Dong mm -hmm. because there's people that care. I mean, we've uh, in the '60s, we, we we've gone from four cup finals, winning the last one in '63, '65, we went down, and we went down big time. We were we were like we were in the last eighteen months, mm. gone without a trace, but. Something changed. Uh, Coombs came in. Yeah, you got yeah. Stan Collis as manager, and suddenly a couple of years later, we're, in the sem we're always in the promotion race. We got in the semi-final of the cup. <coughs> mm -hmm. You go on. You, you go on years later, the back end of the nineties, when we're you know desperate. Yeah. We, win, yeah. we win a cup. We get a, You know, we suddenly start. We get out of that third division and we start moving back. Yeah. Then it went down again. We had Barry Fry in. 
and, and, and obviously Sullivan and Gold coming in. Yeah. We, were, we were in dire straits when they came in. Yeah. Um, okay, everybody criticises David uh, Sullivan for, you know, oh, he, he was only in it for himself. He wanted to, well, he bought it for about half a million and sold it for 80 million. And yeah. we, we, we went along the sex success with it. With that. Yeah. Now, we haven't had anything like that since. No. no. It's no. just gone one way since then. Yeah. But it'll yeah. come back. I, I, look, I firmly look, believe look, 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 it's coming Ham, back. Yeah. Look yeah. what Sullivan's done with West Ham, Alan. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And, and that was that. the only if, – if, if our council had have let him build a new stadium – He'd have been quite happy and had have stayed here. He went. He went and got into the the Olympic Stadium, West Ham, and the, and the powers that be said, "Yeah, you are. Have it next to nothing." Mm-hmm. And he built. It, he, he built. You know, yeah. we, we've got a sixty thousand seat stadium. Well, we could have had that if, if our council had been a bit more, a bit more foresight. Mm-hmm. Our council, you- won't even know it's have a badge on the back of the thinking. That's Bill right. Yeah. That's um, right. You, you're pro- Alan, you're yeah. probably the same same mindset as me. Is that Whatever happens, Birmingham City will always be there. Yeah, it'll always be there. even if it's a if it's a team, if it's a park team, it'll still be there. We'll still be following them. That's yeah, because we're crazy. Was you there, Alan, in '63 when we won the League Cup? I saw the first leg. I saw the first leg. I didn't. St Andrews. I, it, it, at St Andrews, yeah. It was they were played on a Monday and a Thursday of that week, uh, mm. and it was the back end of May because the season had been. Interrupted by all the bad weather, so that's why it was. And the second, the second leg was on my twelfth birthday. Oh right, okay. That was that was uh, that was a present. But I, I've I, di- I didn't go. Can't remember why. I was only twelve. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was just. But, but the kickoff time, my dad got to get back from work and blah blah blah. We we wouldn't have got there in time. We had no cars then. Um, but yes, I. Um, yeah, it was my twelfth birthday, May the twenty seventh. There's another couple of things that have happened on my birth. Or oh, on the twenty sixth, we won the Leyland Daff. Yes, twenty sixth yeah. of May. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, there was a European Cup final played on that day, which I don't remember who won that. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, we but the good news, the good news was the next day I got a job, and I've been out of work for two years, so <laughs> I got a job the next day. So I, I, caught, I was kind of forgiven for that. Do I have to be now? happened on my birthday. One of them is Jesus was born. Uh, Jesus was born on my birthday. <laughs> so, well, I don't think I've ever mentioned talk. that before. Paul. No, you've never mentioned after, it before. After, after being at that first leg then in 63 and waiting all them years until 2011, uh, you know, what was, uh, how did you feel then? Obviously, when Marty's puts that in and, you know, we lift that trophy on that day, how, how did that feel after all that time? Um, um, well, I. Um, <laughs> I had um, a very interesting year before that. Um, I won't bore you with the details, but somebody promised me um, that my uh, lifetime wishes would all come true. And I had I had a granddaughter. Um, other things went on, and that was the last. That was that was the last <laughs> part of the jigsaw. And I almost thought. Well, I told you so, um, but it, it was it was an amazing. T- I tell you what was also. Th- th- I think the European trips were, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. were the thing that I because I mean I was brought up on European football. I thought Birmingham City played in Europe every year forever. And got to the final. On play Cardiff, yeah. And got to the final. That was a given. Yeah. And yeah, actually yeah. to play after all that that was really great. And I, I went on. I didn't go on all of them, but the, the away trips. I always wanted to see Blues play abroad, mm-hmm. and I used to go on the pre-season tours, which is not the same. Yeah. Thing. But that night in in, um, in in Madeira, in Portugal, uh, we're all there and keyed up, and the, and the cloud comes in, and you can't see the pitch, and you're thinking, "Oh, we've come all this way; it's going to get called off." And of course, it blew it blew away, um, and it was it was just magic. And I, you know, there I am sitting with. Jasper Carrot and uh, f- few other well-known people because I went on the I went on the special yeah. plane trip. That was that was amazing. Um, mm. uh, and the night um, the night in Bruges that was I shall remember that for the rest of my life. I, I had a friend who was a steward at the match, and when we got there, they said the, the game might be off because a, a pipe had burst somewhere, 
and they, they, they were worried that um, it, there was a danger to the public. And I sort of looked at him and I looked, you know, there's 8,000 Birmingham fans coming down the road. And I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I better not call this off now. And I yeah. think I think the police said, well, we'll take the risk because we, can, we can't have this lot. <laughs> and then, you know, call, call the match off. Um, and, of course, as you say, the rest's history. I, that was, that was um, yeah, I, I, I always say my most memorable match was the Ipswich semi-final. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and I think you, you, you were a couple of rows behind me that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that goal of AJ's, you know, I, I, I never, I never, ever tired of watching that. And yeah, I keep yeah. waiting for him to clear it. You know, the guy, yeah. he's going to get his boot behind this in a minute and he's going to clear it and he doesn't. And I think of all the rubbish that we had to put up for with all my life, that summed it up. Mm. A stroke of luck at last. Yeah. Somebody yeah. smiled on us, you know, yeah. Yeah. and they can't yeah. take it away. And the noise, uh, had, the noise, Alan, Alan, the noise yeah. oh, so, so right there, they cannot... Nobody can take away those memories, mate. And they've been bad and they've been good. And that's what it's all about being a blue nose. It's a long, long road. We'll never, ever, ever get to the end of it, no matter what, no matter what. But I tell you what, you always keep right on. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We'll yeah, have fun yeah. getting there. We'll have fun getting there. I wish somebody had told me how tired and weary I'd bloody get. <laughs> 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 Great, Courtney. Uh, tell us about the next season. That's going to be season eleven of the Tilton Talk Show. It is. And uh, what guests have we got lined up so far? Oh, can he say? Oh, is he allowed? Is he allowed? Only what you oh. can say. Yeah. yeah. Secrecy too. Cool. Some aren't. We'll give you a couple yet, of inklings so. then. So uh, we've got uh, Wade Elliott, who Ooh, has yeah. agreed to join us. Mm. Uh, we uh, are catching back up with Frank Cadru after uh, he was unable to to meet all of us before. Mm. Um, and uh, we've got a couple of others who, uh, are, should we say, are in the pipeline, but uh, to to be confirmed. Okay, and what's going on with uh, Radio West Midlands at the minute, with yourself? So I've uh, obviously they've they've closed down for the season, um, yeah. but um, hopefully we'll be back in touch. Um, and uh, Daz has mentioned about going back next season. Thanks us all, in fact, for our input across it, not just myself. So uh, it was a, a joint effort. So you're on the, pay- yeah, you're on the payroll be, uh, yet, uh, Craig? Craig, you're on the payroll yet? No, no, I'm waiting to get on yours first, mate. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah, like, Craig. Yes, buddy, don't you worry. <laughs> could, be a long, could be a long wait. <laughs> 11 years I've been waiting. All I've had is a T-shirt with five stars on it. <laughs> don't, forget, <laughs> don't forget wasabi, please. Oh, Craig, God, the whole... The highlight for me, yeah, Craig, has got to be you saying fun believable on, on air. I'm waiting yeah. On. Oh, yeah. 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 Come on, Craig, give us the uh, give us a lowdown on that, what we what we what we said. Well, the, the, the challenge was set, wasn't it, with the uh with the different words that we come up with during lockdown <laughs> and uh, Paul's word of fun believable was uh it, it just had to be got into a conversation and uh, I, I managed to get it into the interview talking about uh, the Robert's throw and saying that it was fun believable that it became a danger <laughs> rather than as it was before a laughing joke. <laughs> yeah. Dad, I'll just glossed over it. <laughs> he, he never, he never, he never. I just got to show, doesn't it? Daz wasn't listening. No, he glossed over it totally. Yeah, yeah. What a, he did. He completely missed it. Craig, problem. a little mission for you next season. Invite Daz on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Invite Daz on. Right. He's a wolf. We'll just talk, eh? uh, you know, how he right? sits in Tom's seat and we'll <laughs> <laughs> He's a wolf fan, isn't he? Or is he a baggy fan? I can't remember now. It's wolves, yeah. It's wolves, yeah. Nah, nah. Is he a ding? Don't no bother. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Forget it. 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 Tom, do you reckon you could get fun believable on Talk Sport? It's a word I invented when I was in my pals. So and I'd have a few bits. When something is that unbelievable, you're actually laughing at it. Like, you know, like. Um, <laughs> Like Ken Cummins moment, for example, that was fun believable when he was like funny and unbelievable. <laughs> Let me tell you, this season watching blues, I've said it a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It has been unbelievable at times. That thankfully now, um there's a little there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You know. Mm. Yeah. It it still depends what they do in the close season, if I'm honest. Yeah. And it may be a long tunnel, Tom. Yeah, there's but, a glimmer of light there, yeah, there is. Remember before, before with Dong, 
that light at the end of the tunnel was a train coming the other way. <laughs> now, <laughs> or going to get with a torch now, bringing you some we've more got to new see the tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, he won out of forget the last two games, he was trying kids. The eight yes, before one five, drew two, lost one. That's promote fans are saying that's promotion form. You've got to be realistic here. Over a season, that wouldn't have happened. That would not have happened over a season. So they need to strengthen. Now that the big test, and he said to me, he said, look. The way the game is at the moment, I can pick some real good bargains up, free transfers, and and he's right. You'll be there'll be some players out of work that are really top players for our division, and that's what he's going to be looking at. He's going to yeah. be looking at um, getting some real genuine bargains that can make us competitive. Tom, do you agree with who's, do you agree with who's been shown the door today? Ah, oh, good question. I was going to talk. Yeah, about I think so. I don't think there's any. Yeah, no, listen, no they, weren't, they weren't good enough. This. And listen, it, I was, I was again, and this is part of the reason I was criticised by Dong and by Richard Speakman, all those Spanish players that come in, it was pretty obvious we were not going to do nothing with them. It was no. just a different, they, they were coming from Spanish second division teams, mm. but they were yeah. the club, the, not the club, but Dong dressed them up like the goalkeeper, Real Madrid keeper signing, behave yourself. He never played for Elm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the reality is we put pressure on them and they just weren't. Vialba was one, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, and, and players of that quality that have all gone. Mm. They're gone now. Yeah. So we need to, this season under Lee, I think rethink the, the recruitment. Lee will not mess around. He will want to be involved in all the recruitment. He's mm. made that absolutely clear. It's, it's not just the recruiting though, Tommy. It is washing out the dead. What is isn't it? And, and like you say, some of those players that come in, you know, we'd never heard of and we'll probably never hear of again. Yeah. Uh, and they'll probably never get interviewed on this show, let alone one of yours. <laughs> no, it's right. You can't get rid of people say sell him. I saw that on the, even on social media, sell him, sell him, sell him to sell anybody. You've got to have a buyer. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. You Tom, know, yeah. Tom, what about this arrangement with the Spanish club that we seem to be a feeder for all of a sudden? Well, oh. not all of a sudden, but over the season. I don't know whether that's... I don't know. Cornelia. 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 Yeah. Cornelia. Yeah. Cornelia. I, I can't. Listen, the Spanish second division club. Mm. What are we going to get out of that? Seriously. Mm. Perhaps yeah. one player. And do you not one. think that all the... If they've, got, if they've got a Jude Bellingham, for example, if they find a Jude Bellingham or somebody like that, every club in Europe will know about it. Mm. They're going to come to us. So nah, well, let's no be chance. sensible here. Let's build a team that can compete, that gives us half a shout. We're not yeah. going to straight away. All I, can, motion. Yeah, all I can say is on that, right? It has got to be down to Lee Bowyer to decide who he wants in, who he wants out, who he's starting, who he substitutes, and who he finishes a game with. It has got to be Lee's 100% choice. No involvement from anywhere else. Zero. Let managers manage. That's why you employ them. That's what they're there for. Okay, what that's he, exactly what we want them to do. Why should, if I'm going to, if I'm going to pick the chairman's team or if I'm going to sign the chairman's decisions, how can I be held accountable? How can my neck be on the block for losing? 100%. So yeah. if you want me, if, if I pick the team, if I pick the players and I, I don't succeed, sack me. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Most managers would accept that. But you're asking me to get the sack for picking your team. Behave yourself. Yeah. Mind you, going on to next season, my own personal uh, sort of hopes, really, um, forget the top six. It'll be nice if we did get into the top six. I'll just take mid-table and just the chance to go again every week. I think, I think the division's poor, mate. I think mm. the division's tough. It's tough, yeah. but it's poor. And we're at, we've got to get out quickly, and I'll tell you why. Because it's going to become harder and harder with the teams that are coming down this season could be the same three that came down going back mm. before we get through. So, yeah. you know, you've got to be, if we're not, eventually the three that come down will be the three that go back and the rest of us will be... Pop we've got Especially to with the ridiculous parachute payments that are out there. Yeah. If, I'm uh, sorry, Tom, me, Tom, Tom, if you get relegated, you get relegated. You'll get paid for failure. Yeah, but, yeah, but you can't do that because the reason Why they not? can't... The reason they can't is... That when they're in the Premier League, they pay Premier League wages on a contract, and that contract might last two years or three years. So oh, the three so, yeah. parachute allows you to pay yeah. the wages yeah. because that's not the player's fault, and he could make clubs go out of business. I hear what you say, 
one of the players' faults that they've got relegated. Yeah, but you, but even if they accepted a drop in wages, they cannot cope with the with the uh, the, the amount of they go from earning a hundred million minimum to earning nothing. You can't do that. Football uh, needs to change, and it needs to change quick. Yeah, uh, listen, we would all agree that football is uh, and wages and all. We ain't gonna change it in our lifetime, my no, friend. No, we are not gonna change it. What we, but what we do need, we're at a stage now where to even things out, we need Premier One and Premier Two, with a fairer distribution of the money, so that when you do get relegated, it's not such a big culture shock. I think we do need Premier League One and Premier League Two. I think that would be the the start. Personally, the whole Premier League thing, and I remember in ninety two, ninety three saying that the, the TV money, the TV coverage, the game was in mortal danger. And it is. Yeah. The, mm. game's, the game's gone as we know it. You've got six clubs at the top of the Premier League. They're the stars. Same six that wanted to get away, by the mm. way. They're mm. the stars. The rest of them, even if Birmingham get promoted, they're a bit part player. That's not, mm. that's not healthy to be a bit part player. Yeah. Everybody mm. else is bit part. Leicester, <laughs> hello, Leicester, Leicester didn't it? Leicester... Upset it all by winning the league. And I was so chuffed when they did, like yeah. I was chuffed when they won the cup. We've mm. got to, somehow, we've got to bring sanity back. Somehow, we've got to do that. Right, here's Bo the Cat making a final appearance of the season. Hello, <laughs> 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 Bo. He's gone. What are you thinking, Tom? Tom, what, what do you think of England's chances? What do you think of our chances in the Euros? The Euros, yeah. Mm. We, 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 they ever disappoint at the last minute, don't they? Yeah. I mean, you look at the squad and you think, that's got to be good enough to do well in the Euros. Yeah. And then you realise what happened with Iceland and you realise what happened with... You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Listen, I think it's got all the ingredients and you might not like it, but I think they've got a plethora of midfield talent to win games. And if Kane's fit, they've got a goal scorer. Yeah. I'm not so sure about... that. I don't think we're as good defensively as... If Maguire's worth eighty million, then that's that's the game. Yeah, absolutely. Into the very last fifteen minutes of the whole season we go, ladies and gentlemen. And tonight, because Alan lives down on the seaside, we're going to do anything to do with the seaside and football. Anything to do with the seaside and football? Let's have your suggestions, please. You've got fifteen minutes. Go. Uh, okay. I've got. I've got one. Oh, this is where. I'm, uh, please, I've got please. One. I'm begging you. I'm begging you out there. Crack me up proper tonight. And make it last all summer. All right, all right Dean Pia. Yeah, yeah. Dean Pia. Oh, yeah. Dean. Oh, <laughs> where did you get that one from? It's not like you to be able to think. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite decent. What about, what about, what about Adam, Adam Beach? As in Adam oh, Beach? Adam Wednesday. Beach, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> yeah good one. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Kip, Paul Gills just said, uh, can we see Clayton being sent out on loan with a view to releasing him as soon as possible? Says Paul Gill. I don't think anybody will take him on loan. He'll no. be looking for a proper move. Mm. It is a good one, uh, and Pete Taylor says I think uh, Craig Gardner's promotion has had a big has had a big influence, and it's great to see him unmuted. What do we think of his influence on the team? I don't get why he shot off to Sheffield and then came back. All of it. I don't get. I don't quite understand that. I'm glad he's back. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I like the guy, and I like I like his his he work. Wasn't wanted, and I like his passion. Yeah, because he, he was mm. going to a manager who wanted him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to involve him, wanted him to be part of it. That's why he went to Stoke. That didn't work out. And in, and Dong, off, Dong got him back. It was Dong who got him back. Um, and I spoke to Lee about this, funny enough, only a few days ago. And Lee said, don't, you know, don't underestimate Craig's input to what's No, mm -hmm. no, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's got, you know he's got it running through his veins, don't you, Tom? 100%. Absolutely, 100%. Mm -hmm. And he's, again, you know, he's got, um, he's got, I think he's got the bit between his teeth to want to be number one himself. Right. And want to be number one at our club. So he's mm, learning the trade as yeah. well. Yeah. He's learning to be. And, sure. you know, he's, he's, yeah, he's got a great one yeah. to learn from. I don't know whether Lee will bring anybody else in. There was talk about it, but we'll wait and see. Um, well, I'm the coaching side, you mean. On Thursday, mm. So I'll find out. Mm. 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 I'm the coaching side, you mean, Tom? I think the coaching side, yeah, he, was, he yeah. wanted to bring his own man in. So I don't know whether that's still going to be happening or not. I think Craig didn't have any influence under Karanka. He just he was he stood there with the board, but it's noticeable with uh, Lee Bowyer. He's he's in his ear and and, and he's obviously obviously filled him in on all the players. He actually has had an influence in the last 
two months, whereas before he was just just there, uh, you know. <laughs> But yeah, but he was done he's with the he was going on, he he's got a voice again, hasn't he? That's he right. Mm-hmm. Here's yeah. another one for you, gents. Here's another one for you. I've got to say, well done to Pep Clotet for the uh, achievements that he's made. Yeah, it's all fresh here, yeah. Yeah, he's done, done yeah. quite well. And, and, really? and what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Exactly. That just right. makes that just makes Dong all the more a problem. Yeah. So look at that then, yeah. Tom. Yeah. Pep, Harry Redknapp, one of the most seasoned managers in the world. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Zola. Zola. Zola was never a manager, if I'm honest. He was no, a... probably not. But a, a real good coach, perhaps, yeah. Um, um, and then and then Pep Clotet, Karanka. Mm-hmm. Karanka's not a bad manager. No, I didn't. Everybody, every Birmingham City fan, Tom, was over the moon at that appointment. Yeah. But then mm-hmm. he just looked a beaten but man. You know, what's the common denominator? Uh, well, that's yeah. what I'm coming to. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're getting at, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one man. Oh. Right, anything yeah. from the seaside, yeah. Chris? Please. Yes, got loads. Uh, Ferry Gill. Oh, no, no, no. no, uh, no, 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 no. Gary, Gary Speedos. <laughs> David <laughs> Speedos. <laughs> Who's was that one? <laughs> Pete Taylor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Donkey Goodman. Don, Don <laughs> Key Goodman. Don Goodman, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gar- oh. Gary Rowett. Uh, oh, Rowett. 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 Yeah. Oh, Jellyfish Gill. <sighs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Grealish, <laughs> deep sea diver. Ooh. <laughs> Mark Sale Bruce. is a good one. Gareth Southend Gate. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Delhi Crab Delhi Crabby Bowler. That's one that Adam Milk. Somebody called Adam Milk. Steve, <laughs> Steve Sand, Steve Sand Castle. Gary Monkfish. Gary Monkfish. Oh, oh, hey. oh liking that one. <laughs> Luke Shaw, Nat Lighthouse. Mickey Finn. <laughs> I like that one. Dean Windows. <laughs> Here's a good one. He's going on. Whitley Baywash. <laughs> Tom Candy. Tom Candy Floss. Should be can Tom, Tom Candy uh, Floss. I'm going to go for Fun Believable Fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and San Jose. There you go. San Jose. How many, how many Jose. times did I say when Don was here, you know, that, that Klopp or Guardiola would struggle? Mm. I did say oh, that a fair few oh, times. Mm. I, do you know what? If if well, I've, I haven't got a quid from for the amount of times that you could say it, mate. But I'd uh, I'd certainly be sitting on a pile of money tonight. Yeah. Mm. Did Did everybody watch the cup final? You know nope. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. I watched. I watched the last. Yeah. No. Nope. Manchester United destroyed that FA Cup final, right? And it's never been the same since. Not ever. It has, isn't it? So where's there's one ticket that won't be needed when Blues get there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. <laughs> That's all I ever wanted and still do. Yeah. Carling Cup was great and I was at the League Cup in 63, both legs. Um, I was at the two European finals against Roma and mm. uh, Barcelona. Um, I've seen them all, but I want to see my team in the FA Cup final. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah it'd be great. I want to see my team. As a boy, as a boy, I just wanted to play for Blues and play at Wembley for, with them. Not play for England or Scotland or World Cups. FA Cup was all I ever wanted. Yeah. Mm. That man yeah, in his white coat on that scaffold the on the centre. Suit. The white you know white what? White suit, absolutely. We, we'd get up and we'd be up at eight o'clock in the morning yeah. and Tizwas would be on and it would be all about the FA Cup. The <laughs> yes, week before, right. it would be all about the FA Cup. Yeah, FA Cup. Yeah. 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 For a question of sport. At school yeah. as well. At school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, one supporting, say, Sunderland. The other one yeah. supporting needs to be mass brawls on the playground. Yeah, and then it, the yeah. day, everybody would come together. Your families would come together. Yeah, yeah. And the FA Cup would go on and you'd watch it and whoever won it. And, you'd, you know, mm. you, you'd always take a team. And then you, your mum would always do your big dinner afterwards, a big yeah. tea. And it was always oh, similar. It was always both on, on both, both channels as well, was it, at the same time? It was like, like Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah. I ever mentioned. I was born yeah. on Christmas Day, Chris. Yeah, yeah, you have a yeah. couple of times. Oh, yeah. yeah, and at eight o'clock it was meet meet the wives' players' cat. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. And things like that. Wasn't <laughs> it? And, then, and then Sunday, all the news will be full of would would be the the victory parades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it was magical. Manchester United, thank you, you lousy horrible football club. You destroyed it the day that you decided not to take part. <laughs> and, and I remember, and I've still got one in the loft, a rosette that my dad kept. And the rosette, the blue and white rosette, and for cup games, they had a, a foil cup in the middle. Yeah, I've got one. And yeah, got that's one. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and me blue and white rattle with me mum. She uh, 
Oh. Painted it blue and I put the names on, but she knitted me a scarf with all the names on Hall, Merrick, Green. Brilliant. <laughs> Craig, I, I believe, uh, Craig, I believe, I believe uh, the card uh, is for Craig. It okay. is indeed. The card has been filled. So Whoa. thank you to uh, hey. everybody. Well done, everybody. Fantastic. I've are we going to draw it before we close or what? Uh, yes, Craig? we are. We've got time? We are indeed. Oh, well, we are indeed. Oh, brilliant. Just very quickly, if I may, just coming back onto the cup final, I was so pleased for Gary Lineker as well after, you know, his reaction and, you know, the way he was after on the, yeah. presenting the program was just amazing, wasn't it? He was, I was, he more was a pleased fan. Before. He was a fan that night, wasn't he? And I can yeah. tell you now, like, you know me and emotion and Birmingham City Football Club. When I watched them bring the owner's son who was killed down, yeah. oh, oh, that that was fantastic. I hide my eyes out. That I was fantastic. Myself, that is oh, what football is yeah, exactly yeah. about. And do you know, Summit, it's not Birmingham City, but I have absolutely got goosebumps. Look yeah, at that. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, 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 Watching yeah. him caress that cup, it, that was That's so real. Apparently, he won't give it back. Yeah, it was. That was so Isn't real. It felt good as well. He won't give it back, Chris. It, well. it, 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 it felt good as well, saying that only two Midlands clubs have won a major trophy at the new Wembley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and both blue. Right, both Craig blue. Courtney, it's over to you until the last few minutes. Go on, Craig. Craig, let's let's get let's go with it, Craig. Right, so I uh, hit the random sampler, and it is Carol Sandland with Big. Everton. Oh, well yes. done, Carol Sandland. Carol oh. Sandland, well done. That ship yeah. will be winging its way to you in no time at all. Fantastic. And, uh, Look after it because it's a special one. It's a spe- it is a good. It's a good. Well oh, oh, done. Yeah. Here's right. Okay. So we're into the last three minutes. Any more on the uh, on the seaside, Chris? Before oh, we go, there's loads. Yeah. Uh, Nick Bucket and Spaldy. Can't do that one now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Chris Bucketti and David Speedy. That's what I was. was, was, was All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Prawn Teal. Yeah. <laughs> I got that one. Prawn <laughs> Teal. <laughs> Gordon Flap on. Oh God! I can't say that. I can't, say, I can't say that one. David Seaman. I can't say that one. Either. Oh, no, that's okay. Oh uh, yeah, John Gale. Force wins. <laughs> How about Kevin Rockpool? Oh, I yeah. like that one. That's very clever. That's... It's only a personal thing, but Pete Taylor's still in the lead at the minute, oh, and he yeah, comes yeah. up with them week after week after week. I don't know what's inside his mind to be perfectly yeah. honest. Bernard Sunshine. Oh, who's, yeah. who's left us today? Oh, that's a sad day. Yeah. Isn't it? That is a sad day. That is oh, okay. <sighs> New Sandcastle. Mm. Uh, New Sandcastle. Sun <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bernard Sun Lotion. <laughs> oh, <I like> <laughs> uh, Kevin Rockpool. Rockpool Tate. Tony Blackbull Blackbull Towers. Like that. Dean Dean <laughs> Pier. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 yeah. Um, uh, that early on, you can't know that. Uh, yeah. What about what about what about Paul Sandy sides? Yeah, yes. good, yeah. One, good one, good yeah. one. Yeah. Sandy sides. <laughs> Sandy sides. Paul Sandy sides. Good one. Um, well, no, Ian, 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 isn't it? Ian Sandy side, sorry. It's not Ian, Ian Sandy side, yeah, 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 Ian yeah, Sandy yeah. side, sorry. Uh, Paul Paul Gill has really thought about this one. Cloudy rain, airy. Oh, cloudy rain, rainy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Didn't make me laugh, but good. <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of lots of lots on Bernard Sun. Bernard Sunburn. I've got one. Go on, Go on Michelle Platino. Oh, oh <laughs> good night, Adam. Gareth <laughs> 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 Gale, Force Wind. <clears throat> Rock Ooh. Madison. David Sully Ice Cream Van. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, and there we go. During the Euros, Tom, you doing any anything for talk sport during the Euros? No. No? Not involved in the Euros at all, though. I'll be having a break. Uh, yeah. Don't blame me, Tom. Listen, guys, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's nine o'clock and we've, we've done a marathon sprint since... Uh, well, since the start of the season before last, to be honest with you, and then all through the summer, through lockdown. Uh, hopefully we've kept you all entertained. We've had a bit of a laugh at the end of the show. We've had laughs during the show. We've brought you quality you. guests. And, uh, and, and, and well, I can't thank those people behind the scenes that do so much work. They are absolutely stunners. Uh, we've got Adam Wilkes, Craig Courtney, Dennis, uh, a plethora of others. 
A massive thanks to Auntie Linda for all the work for charities that she does, to our friends at Accessi Blues, to Garrison Coffee Company, to the Boise Labour Club, uh, SAS Autos, and of course, let's not forget the Blues Trust, and uh, and to everybody, every single body, right? And I'm not singling one or another group out here that helped, and because we're all in this together, because you wear a blue shirt, to get Dong out. Well done, each and every single one of you. No matter what your effort was. No matter what your effort was, thank you. Right? Let's move on. (laughs) Last words from Mark Adams. Quick. Uh, I just want to um, hope everybody has a really nice summer. Look after yourselves. um, And I'll see you next season. Paul Hipkiss. Pretty much what Mark just said, but it's been a pleasure being part of this during, um, you know, obviously I'd like to think it's helped our viewers, but also it's helped, I can only speak for myself, but mm. it's certainly helped me as well, you know, every week yeah. having this to look forward to, to do. And even when Blues weren't playing, you know, during that first lockdown, it was, um, you know, it was great to be part of and, and great to be there. So, yeah, so thanks to everyone. And if you ask, guys, it is good to talk. Do not do this on your own. Do not sit and suffer. I've spoken with a young man in town today, uh, sorry, yesterday afternoon, and he told me about his the issues that he'd been going through over the last two months. I said, dude, hit me up on Facebook anytime you're feeling low. I'll come around and have a beer with you. We'll have a chat, do whatever. And he went, oh, thank you. You know, it's easy. It's nice to be nice. And from Chris Brown. Yes, yeah, I'm really. Uh, make sure you tune in for season 11. Yes, 11, which, is, which, which promises to be bigger. And better. Adam Wilkes. Uh, thank you for letting me be part of all this for the whole season. And uh, I'm looking forward to having a drink and a play with you on the terraces next season. And, a and, your, and your highlight, Adam, was Mr. Paul Tato Head. Yes. Hey, thanks. Yes. <laughs> that was a classic. That was a classic. Brilliant. It was brilliant. <laughs> Alan Watman. Yeah, can I, can I just say thanks for all the, especially people like me who, who now live miles away. I mean, I was 63 years in Birmingham. But this this is my this is my lifeline, and, and I don't know what I'm going to do the next how many Mondays. I mean, it's it's like here every Monday evening. So thank you all for 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 for, for doing this. It really is a lifeline for me. Oh, nice one, mate. Don't I'm over the really abortion. Nice. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and ladies and gents, go on, Chris. Were you saying something? No, I, wasn't uh, I was just going to ask. Uh, just going to okay. ask Chris. Put it, put this out there. Maybe a Euro special in the summer. Maybe, oh. maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I need a rest. I need well, honestly. I'm, 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 I'm talking knackered. to their people, aren't they, Chris? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, what an absolute pleasure and an honour it is to have Tom Ross with us tonight. Oh, he's not only a blue nose; he's a friend of the show, and we always have a chat when we meet, see him outside the Blues. Yeah. Um, and he's a legend in in the world of football commentary, and and that Tom, don't take that lightly because that's how we all feel about you, mate. Most and definitely. that's not because you're blues. Definitely. It's not because you're blues. It's because you are, as you said earlier, professional. Ladies and gentlemen, last couple of words from Tom Ross. Well, firstly, you, you, in my business, you soon learn that legend is very close to legend. <laughs> so I take everything. But seriously, it's, how wonderful is it, whether you're sitting at home listening or whatever, to be part of the greatest club on the planet for me. Definitely. Beautiful. Definitely. Beautiful. Club Definitely. I, love, I love with a passion. Um I don't hate anybody else, but I love my club with a passion. I just want it to do well for the fans because, you know, I call them ever hopeful yet ever disappointed blues fans. And they need some, they need something to happen for them just for a change. Mm-hmm. Finally, check out my podcast. It's well, yes. yeah, great, right. great listen. Great listen. I trust, I promise you, the Barry Fry one, if you're a blue nose, you will love Jeff Orsfield and yes. all the rest of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I'm up to date, Tom. I'm up to date. Thanks for having me on because I'm. Tom, um, it is, it's not only a pleasure. Yeah, our honour, Tom. And you know what? We first met you, what, crikey, about five years ago, four or five years ago? Seven nearly. Uh, and, and, you know, you've come on and you've given your time freely, I think now four times. We've got something special that we're going to be sending you in the post over the next few days. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an invoice. Mm-hmm. It'll go straight in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bugger! <laughs> what do you say, Tom? Sorry. If it said if it's an invoice, he's going to, it's going straight in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget, let's not forget Craig as well. I don't think Craig. Oh no, 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 Craig. Craig. He's our hey, hero. Yeah, Craig, have I mentioned? He's our hero. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Craig. Well, say goodbye to the people. Thank you for uh, everybody listening in. Uh, I think Nick, you put it in the blog, but you know, without everybody else, we wouldn't have a show. So, no, thanks, thanks to everybody for joining. 
Craig, Fantastic. have you published those blogs yet? Yeah, it's all, all published and uh, they're available via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram as well. Um, and like I say, keep an eye out across the summer because even though we won't have shows, there'll be updates on who the guests are going to be and when they'll be on. And don't forget, girls and boys, every single word I wrote, and Craig asked me to do that, and I was actually at work the other day when I did it. I had to put it together in sections and send it to him in sections. But every single word I wrote came from inside my heart, and I meant every bit of it. They ain't off the collar kind of flippy flappy writing or whatever you want to call it. Every single word gets burnt into my heart, and I, all I have to do, and I'm really glad, Craig, you, you said to me, write something. Because that's what I need. And then I just switch off and then it flows out of my fingers, right? And I promise you what comes out of my fingers is generated inside my heart. Promise you. Listen, people, have a great summer. It's been an honour for me to be able to do this. And I know Chris feels the same, Paul feels the same, Mark feels the same, and everybody else involved feels the same. Well, this is coming up for 11 years. This is just this is just crazy mad, crazy mad, because that's like one-sixth of my life, because I'll be 60 on Christmas Day. I don't think I've ever mentioned it, but I will be 60. <laughs> you must have had some paper around you. <laughs> <laughs> Still doing one, yeah? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, the Tilton Talk Show, sponsored by Ball Sports, principal sponsor of Birmingham City Football Club in conjunction with SAS Autos, our good friends at the Blues Trust, Accessi Blues and the Garrison Coffee Company and our good friends down at the Boys of Labour Club where I cannot wait to have a session and sleep on your uh, pub chairs all night long. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long, girls and boys. We'll be back soon. Football will be back soon. Hopefully life as normal will be back soon. And we can all carry on like this never happened. Um, no, I can't say that because it's the wrong thing to say because it has affected so, so, so many people in so many different ways. And please do not think that we've gone away because if one of you is feeling down or low over the summer months, just hit us up with a message. And you know what? We have an army of people that will lift you and carry you through your bad times. I promise you that. And I absolutely promise you that 100%. Mark Adams, thank you very much. Paul Hipkiss, thank you very much. Chris Brown, thank you very much. Craig Courtney, thank you very much. Alan Watton, thank you very much. Tom Ross, thank you so, so much for giving your time up on a Monday night. Have I missed any? No, that's everybody. Adam Burke, thank you very much. And from me, (laughs) God bless you guys. Have a great summer. And these three words will always resonate in your head and in your heart. Keep right on. Good night. And come on, England. No. <laughs> you had to get the last word in, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs>